The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you each week by the Kraft Foods Company. Would you like to win a glamorous new Ford Victoria or one of 1,150 other prizes? Then enter Parquet Margarine's $83,500 Name the Twins contest. Have paper and pencil ready. Full details in our next announcement. Yes, tonight's program and this great contest are brought to you by the makers of Parquet Margarine. The margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh. Try good-tasting, fresh-tasting Parquet tomorrow. Get P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Now, the Great Gildersleeve. Well, our water commissioner is a man who takes his honors and responsibilities seriously. His favorite honor is being president of the Jolly Boys Club. And he doesn't like it one bit when one of the members threatens not to show up at a meeting. That's why he's making an early morning call on Floyd the barber. Hello, Floyd. Oh, hi, Commish. How are the new twins at your house? You got names for them yet? No, not yet, Floyd. But all our friends are working on it. That's good. Hop right up in the chair and I'll give you the works. You, I didn't come in to have anything done, Floyd. Okay, but since you're the water commissioner, I thought you'd want the works. <laughs> No, not this time. I... Thought you might be stepping out tonight. Lloyd, I don't make dates on nights we have Jolly Boys meetings. Oh, so that's why you dropped in. Yes. I hear you aren't coming tonight. Nope, can't make it, Commish. Got to make out my income tax. Your income tax? Yep. On March 14th? That doesn't leave you much time. Well, I ain't got much income. <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd, you can do that today between customers. So far, I got no customers to do it between. <laughs> Lloyd, don't forget your esprit de corps. Why, is that a deduction? <laughs> no, that's loyalty to the Jolly Boys Club. These meetings are important. Well, Uncle Sam don't know that. There's two things little Floydy Munson does, Commish. Salute the flag... And pay his taxes. Well, good for you, Floyd. Yeah. But if you try, I'll bet you can attend the meeting tonight. Yeah, I'm a busy man, but you don't catch me skipping a Jolly Boys meeting. Well, I... Yeah, I don't know what I'd do without the Jolly Boys. Yeah, I'd never let them down. I value the association too much. You will have a lot of fun tonight, Floyd. Good fellows, getting together, singing a rousing song. Yeah, you can't beat it. And then you'll come, Floyd. Well... I'll total up my tax and then see if I feel like singing. <laughs> <laughs> Good. See you tonight. Gildersleeve, you're a fine president. Bertie! Bertie, I'm home. She's out in the kitchen, Unc. Oh, hello, Leroy. Hi. You come home for lunch, too? Well, I might eat while I'm here. I really came home for a letter. Bertie phones said I had a special delivery. Oh, yeah. It's from a woman. Leroy, how do you know? I smell the envelope. <laughs> <laughs> it's loaded with perfume. Oh? Where is it? I put it over by the open window. You open it. <laughs> yeah, I wonder who'd be sending me perfumed letters. Oh, hello, Anki. Hello, Marjorie. There's a letter for you. Yeah, I have it right here, my dear. It's pink. Yeah, I see. And loaded with perfume. Yeah, yeah all right, Leroy. I... Say, it is. Well, who's it from, Anki? Yeah, who's it from? No, Leroy, this letter's addressed to me. I know. Who's it from? I... <laughs> well, I don't recognize the handwriting. Who do you know that writes? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Excuse me, children. Oh, where are you going, Uncle? Well, if you don't mind, I'm going in my study and read this letter. Gosh. What a family. Yeah, I don't blame them, though. I'm curious myself. Backhand writing, modernistic style. You better see who it's from first. 
Well, Katie Lee, the little showgirl I held the umbrella for that day in the rain. Yeah, I'll never forget when she took me backstage at the Palace Theater, dried my coat and sang The Girl in the Wood just for me. <laughs> I wonder why she's writing. Dear Throckmorton, remember me? <laughs> this is to let you know I'll be in Summerfield the night of March 14th. Say, that's tonight. Yeah, I'll arrive at 7.30, and we'll only have a few hours between trains, but I'd love to see you, Katie Lee. she would love to see me. <laughs> what a girl. You wait a minute, Gildersleeve. You can't meet that train. You have a Jolly Boys meeting. Well, I can call off the meeting. I'm president. <laughs> no, nah, not after what I told Floyd about loyalty to the club. Gildersleeve, you'll just have to forget her. I better go back to the barber shop and get the works. <laughs> I hear you right, Kamish. Shave, haircut, shampoo, and massage? That's right, Floyd. All for the meeting tonight? Y you, well, as a matter of fact... Gee, you do think a lot of us jolly boys, don't you? Yeah, I think a lot of you. Well, <laughs> Floyd... What's the matter, Kamish? You, well, you see, that is... Yeah, I won't be there. What's this, Mr. President? You know, Floyd, something has come up. Yeah, well, what about that line you were giving me this morning about attending meetings? Well... I made out my income tax so fast, I don't even get a rebate. <laughs> All says I could be a jolly boy tonight. Well, I'm sorry, Floyd, but this is an unusual situation. I'm listening. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hiya, Judge. Come on in. I got a welcher in the chair. Floyd! Hello, Gilda. Hello, Judge. What's this about a welcher, Floyd? Nothing, Judge. Now, hurry up, Floyd. Sure, I'll hurry it up. Be the fastest shave, shampoo, massage, and haircut you ever got. Pull your ears in. <laughs> you watch it, Floyd. Well... Are you getting all that just for the meeting tonight, Gildy? My, what a pretty president we'll have. <laughs> well, Horace... He ain't coming to the meeting tonight. You're not, Gildy? Why can't you attend? Now, Judge, it isn't something I feel I have to explain. When we can't attend, you ask us to explain? Well, I'm the president. And the president can do anything he wants to do. Well, the Congress ain't with you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But you reminded all of us of the meeting. Don't you think an explanation is in order, Gildy? Well, yeah, I have to meet a train. Oh? Why? Well, you got a letter that a friend's coming to town. You can't let a friend down. <laughs> Get him. Floyd. Coming around the back. Oops. Floyd, wash those scissors. Sure. Floyd, I'm sure if we had a friend coming in on the train, we'd feel obligated to meet him. Him? Oh, yes. I'm sure Gilda has the best interests of the Jolly Boys at heart. Well, that's what he said this morning. So I suggest we give our president a vote of confidence and wish him a pleasant evening with his friend. You thank you, Judge. Floyd? Okay, Commish. Yeah, thanks, Floyd. Right, George, you jolly boys are true blue. <laughs> I guess I had you wrong, Commish. But the way you're getting gussied up here, I figured you was throwing us over for a dame. <laughs> Floyd. <laughs> you ought to know me better than that. You dropped something, Floyd. Huh? There's a letter under the chair. I didn't have no letter. Hey, hand it to me, Judge, please. Well, a pink envelope. Judge, hand it over. And perfumed. No kidding. So that's the letter you got, huh, Mr. Gildersleeve? No, Floyd. Gildy. But Judge... Get out of the chair. You're through. <laughs> Floyd, you can't turn me out with half a haircut. Why not, Gildy? When you meet your girl, you can keep your trim side toward the train. <laughs> you over. Yeah, I wonder why they call this club the Jolly Boys.
Great Gildersleeve returns after this important announcement. Here are real prizes for you. Twenty brand new 1951 Ford Victorias will be won in Parquet Margarine's $83,500 series of Name the Twins contest. Yes, four of these wonderful new Ford models will be awarded every week for five weeks. And in addition, each week for five weeks, Parquet will award 10 General Electric portable dishwashers, 20 General Electric triple whip mixers, 100 crisp new $20 bills, 100 crisp new $10 bills, 1,170 prizes in all. Here's how you enter. Think of names for Bronco and Margie's twins. One's a boy, one's a girl, remember. Get an entry blank from your grocer. It will tell you how prize-winning entries are selected, or use plain paper if you prefer. Send your names for the twins, plus your own name and address, to Parquet Margarine, Box 6799, Chicago 77, Illinois. With each entry, enclose the red end flap from a package of Parquet Margarine. And remember, if you'd like to try for a first prize, plus a special $500 cash bonus, include two Parquet red end flaps. One end flap entitles your entry to full consideration for a Ford Victoria. Two red end flaps entitle you to $500 extra if your entry wins one of the weekly first prizes. Remember this address. Parquet Margarine, Box 6799, Chicago 77, Illinois. First week's contest ends midnight this Saturday. So hurry, name the twins. Get your entry off tomorrow. Well, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. If you were torn between meeting your cronies at the Jolly Boys Club or meeting a charming woman between trains, what would you do? Well, that's just what the great Gildersleeve did. Hello? Hello? The depot? Is the 7.30 still on time? Yeah, thank you very much. Keep it that way. Goodbye. <laughs> Bertie? Oh, Bertie. Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve? The train's on time. Uh, Miss Lee and I might like some hot cocoa tonight. Yes, sir. Oh, are you inviting Miss Lee over here, Unky? Well, Marjorie, she won't want to sit around the depot after being on a train so long. You won't want to sit around the depot either, will you, Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know how it is, Bronco. Yeah, I know how it is, don't I, Marge, honey? <laughs> oh, Bronco. Uh, shouldn't you kids be getting ready for the movie? You want to be out of the house by 7.30. Yeah, I mean, at the movie. I don't know, Mr. Gildersleeve. You, I say, Bronco. Maybe we shouldn't go out tonight. Bronco! What do you think, Marge? Well, now that we have the twins, maybe we should stay home and save our money. You, Marge, you can't stay home. And don't let saving money bother you. Here, here's two dollars. Here's five dollars. Oh, no! No, Mr. Gildersleeve. No, we can't let you pay our way. Besides, I don't want to spend an evening away from my son and daughter. But Bertie wants to take care of them. And you two haven't been out. This is the night to go out, believe me. Well, I think we'll stay home. Oh, my goodness. Look at it this way. You still haven't named the twins. You may get some suggestions from the movie. You why don't you go see Born Yesterday? <laughs> well, well, that's an idea, Marge. Let's go. All right, darling. That was tough. <laughs> Going to work. Uh, Leroy, you're going to the movies with Margot and Bronchi. I am? Uh, get your coat, Leroy. Sure, but what's going on? We're taking you to the movies. Keen, but what's going on? Leroy, you're going to the movies. Now get going. Okay. I don't know what's going on, but I like it. <laughs> yeah, I better get started, too. Bronco, get my coat. I've got to be at the train by 7 30. Somebody call Bertie? No, Bertie. <laughs> Pandemonium. Hello, Peavy. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you tonight? Well, I'm in a hurry, Peavy. I'm on my way to the train. Leaving town? <laughs> no, Peavy. You thought you might be leaving town after what Floyd and the judge had to say about you. Yeah, you know, Peavy, I'm sorry I can't be at the meeting tonight. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, it doesn't make any difference to me if you're not there. You doesn't? <laughs> if you're not at the Jolly Boys meeting, I'll get to sing lead. There is a tavern in the town. In the town. Yeah, all right, Peavy. Yeah, I'm in a hurry. I want to buy something. Oh, well, 
I'll shut up then. <laughs> Phoebe, I want some perfume for a young lady. You don't say. Yeah. <laughs> Take a sniff of this letter. Mm, smells like it came from the city. You <laughs> did, Phoebe. Yeah, I'd like to present her with a bottle of this when she gets off the train. And I wouldn't let her open it too close to the engine, Mr. Gildersleeve. She might blow up the depot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how about it, Pete? How much is an ounce? I don't know. I don't have any. Yofer. You know, I have to give her something, Peavy. Well, we have the chocolate-covered cherries and bonbons. Well, give me the biggest box of bonbons you have, Peavy, and charge it. Very well. Say, seven twenty-five. I have to be going. Well, don't forget your letter. You, thanks. Hey, just a minute. Mr. Gildersleeve, I think I'll get my hat and go with you. <laughs> you will not. Gildersleeve, when she gets off the train, be cool and collected. Let her look around for you for a little while. And just casually saunter up and say, Good evening, Miss Lee. How nice to see you again. Say, there she is. There she is. Katie, Katie, over here. Stop, yeah, I'm coming. Pardon me, madam. Here, yeah, Miss. Oop, she's coming through. I have to help the lady with the guitar. Katie, you welcome to my little home. Oh, isn't this attractive? You have uh, nothing elaborate. But a city official doesn't dare live too high if he wants to remain a city official. <laughs> Here, let me take your coat and your guitar. Well, I could have left this in the car. Oh, no. I'm hoping you'll sing for me again. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Let's sit over here on the couch by the fire. What a lovely fire. She's so graceful. Sits like a swan. Sit here beside me. Oh, yes. Mm. You, you. <laughs> it's nice of you to look after me between trains, Throckmorton. Oh, it's no chore, believe me. I've been looking forward to this. Being with you here by the fire. Just we two. Really? Mm-hmm. You <laughs> Oop. Yes, Bertie. You had some cocoa yet? Uh, not just yet, Bertie, thank you. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening. You, uh, Bertie, this is Miss Lee. You heard me speak of her. I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. How do you do, Bertie? I'm fine, thank you. My, you pretty. Thank you. Did you have a nice train trip, Miss Lee? Well, uh, you... Bertie, no cocoa now, thank you. Yes, sir. And you on the stage, ain't that something? Well, it isn't always as nice as this, Bertie. No, ma'am. Have you been on the stage long? Oh, Bob. Oh, brother. Bertie, perhaps you had better start the cocoa. Yes, sir. When you want cocoa, just have Miss Lee strum the guitar, something like tea for two. All right, Bertie. Of course, it won't be tea. It'll be cocoa. <laughs> <laughs> I like Bertie. Yeah, Bertie's wonderful. Say, why don't you sing something for me, Katie? Do you really want me to? Do I? Here, here's your guitar. All right. And here's a little love song called I Know My Love. Great. Oh, I know my love by his way of walking, and I know my love by his way of talking, and I know my love by his eyes of blue. Hey, brown. <laughs> but if my love leaves me, what will I do? And yet he cries, I love you the best. But a troubled mind, sure, can know no rest. And yet he cries, funny girls are few. But if my love leaves me, what will I do? 
I'd never leave. This is too wonderful. Katie, you'll never know how many times I thought about that rainy day we met. You were very kind. Yeah, and you invited me backstage and sang to me in the empty theater. Mm-hmm, I remember. And you sang The Girl in the Wood. Katie. Yes? Will you sing it for me? Now? All right. Close your eyes. Oh, this is what I've been waiting for. Oop. Who's at the door? I'll get it! Good evening, Bertie. Hello, Bertie. Hi, Bertie. Oh, for the Jolly Boys. The Jolly Boys? Yeah, friends of mine. Or they used to be. Oh, Gildy, we didn't know you'd be home. <laughs> you bet. Hi, Chris. We thought we'd come over and use the piano. The one at the club's out of tune. It's always been out of tune, Floyd. This isn't very considerate, fellows. Pardon me, but I don't think we've met the young lady. You, well, Miss Lee, I have to... Yeah, I mean, may I present Judge Hooker? Miss Lee? Mr. Peavy. Mm, happy to make your acquaintance. Yeah, and Mr. <laughs> Munson. Hi. We met when she come in the barbershop one day, soaking wet. Oh, yes, I remember. Well, it's nice to meet all of you. Well, perhaps we should be going. Fine. Goodbye, fellas. See you later. Oh, no, don't rush away, please. Yes, but... Come on. Sit down. Me too? All of you. Mr. Munson, right over here by the fire. Well, I was going to go home. Oh, no, Judge Hooker. Over here. Thank you. All in a circle. Four nice-looking men. <laughs> she wasn't looking at you. She wasn't looking at you either. <laughs> Quiet, fellows. I was about to sing a song for Throckmorton about a boy who met a girl in the woods. Oh, shh, you old goat. <laughs> oh, when I was a young boy and drove my mother wild, I met a maid. In the wood, and she said, Child, look deep into my green eyes and at my autumn hair. When you're a man, you'll never see a girl quite so fair. Remember me. Remember me, remember for the rest of your life. I've wished a hundred times that she'd never looked at me with the first wild beauty that only youth can see. For a man cannot find it when he's looking a wife, and he'll end up in bachelorhood the rest of his life. Remember me, remember me, remember for the I swore as she vanished that when I was full grown, I'd have a girl just like her to be my very own. But now I am a man and I'd marry if I could. But I can't lose the memory of the girl. Remember me, remember me, remember for the rest of your life. Beautiful. Oh, there's my taxi. Your taxi? I arranged for one before we left the station. Yeah, but Katie... I have to catch my train. Goodbye, boys. Katie, wait a minute. No, thanks for everything. Goodbye, Rock Morton. Yeah, but... Goodbye. Oh, what an exciting girl. 
Where'd she come from, Kamish? I don't know. All I know is she's gone again. And I'd like to go with her. Now, Gilda, let it be just as she said. An evening we'll always remember. I won't forget it. <laughs> After all, in the end, we'll all be happier here at home with our memories. No, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Neither would I. Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Remember, entries in this week's Name the Twins contest must be postmarked before midnight this Saturday. Just think, you may win a thrilling Ford Victoria. With your names for the twins, enclose your own name and address and the red end flap from a package of parquet or two red end flaps if you want to try for that extra $500 bonus as well as a Ford. Send your entries to Parquet Margarine, Box 6799, Chicago 77, Illinois. We're home, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh. Hello. How was the evening, Anki? Oh, fine. What's the matter, Mr. Gildersleeve? Are you thinking about something? Me? No. Nothing. We haven't thought of names for the twins yet. Have you, Anki? I wonder if we could call them Katie and Lee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Uncle Mort. Don't be sad. She'll come back. Yeah, I hope so. Good night, folks. <laughs> Gilda Sleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Dick Prenna, Arthur Q. Bryan, Earl Ross, Katie Lee, and Dick Legrand. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of those famous Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gilda Sleeve. What's your favorite sandwich? Hot beef or pork, cold cuts, bologna, liver sausage, cheese? Well, whatever it is, remember this. If you add a little mustard, you'll add a lot of tang. Yes, a little mustard makes every bite taste better, particularly if it's Kraft's prepared mustard. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard, you know. Kraft salad mustard, mild and delicately spiced, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand for different tastes, different uses. And remember, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft's prepared mustard. Don't miss The Falcon every Sunday over this station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast and listen next Sunday as The Falcon solves The Case of the Witty Widow. <laughs> Laugh with the one, the only Groucho. He's on NBC.